con la, la última sesión. Comienza con la, la intervención de Tomás Jelensky, que es profesor de la, la Universidad de Cracovia y presidente de INBAU en, en Polonia. Tomás, gracias. Um, thank you very much for having me here um, at this fantastic seminar. Um, and thanks to the organizers and a special thanks to Alejandro. Um, describing the phenomenon of the Polish School of Conservation, it needs to be noted that uh, Polish curators of monuments had generally supported the anti-reconstructivist principles, but they did not hesitate to disregard them if they deemed the construction of a structure necessary for the national culture. They believed that built heritage is one of the main assets that communities recovering from the disasters wish to rebuild. Um, this was especially true after World War II, when they pursued the nearly total reconstruction of historical urban complexes. Uh, faced with the unprecedented loss of the material culture, they consciously, reluctantly withdrew from the contemporary conservation doctrine, certain that in exceptional circumstances, monuments of urbanism and architecture should be treated as the prime bearers of culture and memory. The conservator general, Jan Zafatovich, justified the reconstruction of destroyed historical city centers with the following words. Our sense of responsibility to future generations demands that we rebuild the part of us that was destroyed. Uh, that we rebuild it completely, aware of the tragedy of the conservation forgery that we are committing. From an antiquarian viewpoint, uh, the loss of building stock in most Polish cities was so immense uh, that the recovery of the original was impossible. However, the uh, reconstructing the fabric and townscapes was necessary to recreate the idea of the old cities and the original experiences. They presented the last emotional bonds to the material culture that ceased to exist, the interiors, furniture, art collections, libraries. The strategy for the reconstruction of historic town centers in Poland was focused on the creation of a scenic beauty in order to reveal their role as a constructions of collective identities. Um, today I'd like to remind briefly some facts and pictures of three or maybe four Polish cities reconstructed between late 1940s and early 60s. Um, the most famous one is Warsaw, which was destroyed several times during the war, and at its end it was being deliberately annihilated block by block. Uh, it might seem that the instant rebuilding of Warsaw was the most obvious solution, but the scope of the destruction was so vast that the planners discussed whether to rebuild Warsaw or to leave the city once the population of 1.4 million, it was the, the fifth biggest city in Europe, as a site of remembrance. remembrance. But actually, the Nazis' intentions to annihilate Warsaw actually strengthened the society's will to rebuild it, not only as a place to leave, but also as a necessary demonstration of defiance and resilience. I, I really like this photo. The, the, uh, the advert on the shed says, you get your pedicure or manicure here. Um, the question of the removal of the multi-layered sea of debris was first among the problems. And the next was how to evaluate the substance for further reconstruction. Should the rebuilding be quick uh, in order to accommodate a million of homeless or should it be precise to meet the conservation criteria? Uh, the architect, architects who worked for the Bureau of Capital's rebuilding mostly followed the ideas of functionalism and decided to renew Warsaw in the modern style with the wide streets and large free areas. And many existing buildings and buildings that could, be, could have been rebuilt were further demolished. Uh, several edifices were moved, like, like, like this church or this palace, which was actually turned 72 degrees. 72 degrees. 
Um, the eventual political agreement for the scrupulous rebuilding of the most precious parts of the historic city of Warsaw was primarily the result of the determination of the inhabitants and uh, the support of the whole nation. The reconstruction of the old town, the new town, uh, the royal route um, was, uh, was the grassroots manifestation of the care and attention supported by the conservators and art historians. This is an interesting picture, it's from this one. It's from 60s, the, the Royal Road, part of it, you see it's reconstructed, but the side of the castle is still empty. Um, architects and conservators had been preparing the documentation for the reconstructions since the first bombardments of Warsaw in 1939. Uh, in the Warsaw Old Town, the reconstruction included the holistic recreation of the urban plan, townhouses, the city walls, important religious buildings, and, uh, so I missed my one slide, I think. No. Yeah, this one, sorry. Um, and, and the royal castle. Uh, as regards houses, the, the accurate uh, reconstruction um, of facades was entwined with an improvement of technical aspects and overall attractiveness and comfort for residents. Um, lots of original elements were used during the reconstruction. The most precious movables and architectural elements from the castle, such as doors, columns, mantelpieces, etc., were safely hidden during the Nazi occupation. And it was an organized activity led by Professors Zachwatowicz and Lawrence, who acted as representatives of the Polish underground state tasked with preserving the national heritage. Um, so, um, the, the many original elements can be found particularly in the Royal Castle, which was rebuilt from scratch. It's actually founded two meters higher than the original structure, but it contains numerous original pieces which were hidden from the bomb castle before it was finally blown to, blown to bits. Uh, here are a few pictures from castle's interiors, completely restored uh, in 70s and 80s, um, but consisting lots of original fragments. According to UNESCO, with the royal castle reconstructed between 1971 and 1984, the historic center of Warsaw has fully retained its authenticity as a finished concept of post-war reconstruction. And, and this is uh, an example that, um, show, showing that um, the, the reconstruction outside the old town is continued. This is a, a developer's project, uh, recently finished. It's, it's almost finished. I did this photo like two weeks ago, I think. Um, another significant Example would be the reconstruction of the main town in Gdańsk. 90% of the city was destroyed by Soviets after the war. It needs to be said that the scale and totality of reconstruction brought about the imperable loss of numerous elements that had survived the war. Walls, vaults, details, authentic fabric which in normal circumstances should be subject to architectural conservation. There was a greater idea, however, uh, that uh, was the need of swift domestication. Rebuilding Gdańsk in more or less uh, reliable forms first brought the city to life and only later recovered it for the cultural landscape. The old districts were mostly reconstructed as housing estates, but with an excessive number of public buildings due to the presence of historical edifices. Uh, most precious monuments were rebuilt in um, general conformity with principles of conservation. In most cases, however, the parts, such as vaults, roofs, and tops of towers, had to be restored. Conservation discipline was also applied to the major streets and um, the city panorama visible from the Motuava River. It's a part of this panorama. The concept was to create a cultural landscape which was, would provide an idea of what the destroyed city had looked like. 
However, single burger houses were replaced with long blocks of flats divided into segments corresponding to the division of historical plots and covered with a screen of individual Renaissance frontages. It was decided to refer to Gdańsk's um, golden era of the 16th and 17th centuries and the whole period between 15th and uh, 18th century when the city was the largest port and fortress within the borders of the Polish crown. Um, you can see um, how the dense, dense urban blocks were uh, replaced with um, uh, much less dense um, blocks or green yards. And here are some examples and details. Uh, details were crucial to restore the experience of the cultural landscape. And here you can see that uh, the, these are, for example, these are actually one building behind the facades. Um, well, these three buildings, actually one, just three facades. And uh, you can find them everywhere. Well, this one, this is one structure with the modern facilities, modern uh, interiors. Um, And this was reconstructed uh, much later, in 1990s, as part of uh, it's a, it's Stongievna Street, Southern Elevation. Uh, on the other side, the construction is still going on. And uh, Stongievna is sometimes criticized as it's, it's not the same quality as it used to be in the 50s. Um, but still, it's much more admired by, by the citizens. Um, this is very recent. It's, it's another part of the city, new facades. Uh, and this is a, an example of new traditional architecture. It's a completely new building uh, constructed at the end of 1990s. And uh, Gdańsk is, has its own share of postmodern architecture as well and uh, modern contextual or pseudo contextual. Um, the biggest project, project now is a part of the Grana Island, actually it's the, part, the last part which wasn't rebuilt before, but it's, uh, it's very banal and very, hugely controversial. Um, but uh, this is very new, this is, uh, it was finished a few months ago. Uh, these two buildings are... Uh, Quite a detailed reconstruction. These are inspired by photographs from the beginning of the 19th century. And there are some proposals for new infill developments in the very core of the city as well. Wrocław is another city with a multinational and multicultural past where urban identity Reconstruction is bound to be complicated. For over four centuries, Wrocław was under Austrian, Prussian, and German rule and developed a considerable Germanic architectural heritage. <coughs> At the end of World War II, the city was transformed into a fortress, and Wrocław became the last Nazi stronghold, defended longer than Berlin. When, as a result of the Potsdam Conference, the city was handed back to Poland, 70% of its area and 90% of its old town was in ruins. Uh, the process of rebuilding was characterized by a mix of simultaneous destructions and reconstructions. Uh, the medieval architecture was thoroughly restored, propagating the account of an ancient Polish city, while, while many testimonies of later areas deteriorated. However, the reconstruction of Wrocław historic center 
between 1953 and 1962 was one of the largest projects undertaken in Poland after the war. In effect, alongside medieval monuments associated with the Polish history, uh, numerous buildings of German origin were also restored. Like Nor Norman Davis said, the war and expulsions may have influenced the geopolitics, but they could not erase all those hundreds of years of Slavonic-German interaction and overlapping of cultures. Some of these buildings are pretty new, actually, uh, built in 90s and not these, not these one, obviously. This is the University of Wrocław. Uh, when Poland reg regained independence in 1989, it paved the way to finally acknowledge Wrocław's various heritages and preserved and recreated remnants of Germanic Breslau eventually achieved the role of respected artifacts. After decades of persistent renovations resumed in 1990s, it became vivid how much the, the once mutilated cityscape of Wrocław had maintained in respect of, to image continuity. Some more images from Wrocław. <laughs> Another city reconstructed after the war was Poznań. Uh, once uh, it was the first capital in Poland until the 11th century. Let me say a few words about methods and implementation of the Polish School of Conservation practice and uh, its in international dimension. As uh, in international debates, the methods adopted in rebuilding Polish cities seemed controversial for many specialists, strongly attached to the concept of monument auth authenticity. However, the Polish school efforts attracted worldwide interest due to their scale and also methodology. For example, the white chart, a standard monument description invented during the massive reconstructions of Polish cities has become a model for inventory systems in many countries. The school established neither doctrine nor a separate scientific community, but it was based on a practice which developed into a methodology of architecture preservation as a coherent application rather than a sum of issues for individual conservation branches. This change allowed professionals in various specializations to fully understand the specifics of the subject. A series of instructions were described formulating the so-called cycle of conservation, an optimal procedure monument preservation combined with detailed ways of formulating and explaining the scope and means of the planned work. This is the Poznan Castle. It was reconstructed just a few years ago. Also hugely controversial. Um, what was quite unusual, but, but and uh, this is, uh, it's now built actually. Uh, what was quite unusual, but crucial for the success of those practices was an organization model of the state conservation workshops. The enterprise was established in 1945 by, but by the Ministry of, of Culture, and by the beginning of the 1950s, the enterprise had expanded into a network of 9,000 employees at 19 regional offices. It was developed on the foundation of the complex architectural and archaeological research advanced in the interwar period by Oskar Sosnowski at Warsaw Polytechnic. It included both historical archival research and in situ inventory drawings with particular attention to typology and regional architectural detail. Later, its scope extended to feasibility studies and the implementation of works at various scales, from entire urban complexes to handicrafts. The workshops were able to carry out the entire conservation process without any outsourcing, from initial research, such as historical, archaeological, architectural, constructional, and chemical to effective project execu execution with its own staff. Uh, during the post-war 
uh, reconstructions, the workshops managed to adjust the methodology, techniques, and scientific standards to various local circumstances. And um, since 1960s, ex established the Polish school on the international market, um, mainly in post-colonial state. This is Professor Michałowski and, and, and his colleagues. Post completed hundreds of heritage projects of various scales in over 30 countries, including more than 20 sites that are now entered of the, on the UNESCO World Heritage List. But this is another story. Um, the city of Warsaw itself became a token of a total reconstruction. Following the conservation doctrine settled by the Venice Charter, for several decades UNESCO's World Heritage Committee opposed reconstructions. The first ex exception was made in 1980 for the historic center of Warsaw, described as an example illustrating, quote, the effectiveness of conservation activities in the second half of the 20th century, which permitted the integral reconstruction of the complex urban ensemble and a major contribution to the changes in the doctrines related to urbanization and conservation of cities. In 2011, also the archive of the Warsaw Reconstruction Office housing documentation of both the post-war damage and the reconstruction projects was inscribed in the UNESCO memory of the World Register. Thank you very much. Thank you for your attention. <laughs>